How Matak Yippee, my name is Sean Sherman. I am a co-founder of our nonprofit Natives and CEO of my company, The Sioux Chef, based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I am born and raised on Pine Ridge Reservation and enrolled with the Oglala Lakota Sioux Tribe. At Natives, our two main goals are creating access to indigenous-focused foodways education, along with facilitating indigenous food access to our many indigenous communities across Turtle Island. We run a nonprofit kitchen called Indigenous Food Lab. Our mission with Indigenous Food Lab is to facilitate a lot of indigenous focused curriculum, creating a space for indigenous culinary education and development to be able to do a lot of food relief where necessary. And we're hoping that we can work with tribal communities across Turtle Island to help them to develop more indigenous food operations everywhere. In this series of videos, we're sharing recipes our culinary team at Natives have developed that combine commodity products available through the food distribution program on Indian reservations, which is FDPIR, on top of that utilizing indigenous wild edible foods that we found in our own regions. So if you're in the Midwest or Mountain Plains regions, these recipes are for you. We're hoping that people who have access to the commodity food program will be able to utilize these recipes. On top of that, spending some time outdoors and reconnecting with the nature around them as our ancestors did. We truly believe that bringing more indigenous foods into our kitchen and onto our plates will help with our health and our wellness and our cultural diversity. Pilamae and thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoy these recipes. All right, thank you guys for joining us. Um, today we are making bison meatballs with a tomato pasta sauce and fresh dandelions. Um, so we're excited to be able to utilize uh, some bison, some fresh bison ground um, in this recipe. Um, we're also going to have some dried raisins that we're going to rehydrate with a little bit of hot water. Um, we've got a bunch of fresh dandelions that we picked ourselves. Um, we're utilizing some of the products here. So we have some crushed corn flakes that's going to go into the bison meatballs. We have a little bit of oil. We are using some white onions, but there's a lot of prairie onions and there's a lot of ramps out there. So if you guys want to try with wild onions, you can easily substitute these onions for, uh, with those wild onions that are all over the place out there. We also have a couple of cans of some tomato sauce, no salt added, and we're utilizing some dried spaghetti today for this recipe. And if you don't want to use any gluten in this recipe, feel free to scratch the pasta and use some wild rice. So we're also using a little bit of dried oregano um, for these meatballs, and we are using some garlic powder because um, most people will have this, but of course, if you have fresh garlic, please use that. It's just so much better. Um, and again, if you're able to get your hands on some ramps, the, the green tops are so good, and the bulbs are so great too, um, and you can definitely add that into there. Um, and if you're out there on the plains, and if you uh, know what bergamot looks like, uh, we utilize bergamot as kind of a wild oregano all the time too, which is another great seasoning. So feel free to make some substitutions Again, these recipes are just kind of guidelines of what's possible, utilizing some of the commodity food products on top of uh, getting out there and finding your own wild foods. So some of the pieces that we're going to need to build this recipe, you're going to need one large pot to be able to cook your pasta in. We're going to need a strainer, which I have set up in the sink already. Um, we're going to need another pot to mix our tomato sauce in. And we we're going to be doing the meatballs on the stove. You can do these in the oven if you want to, but they also work just as well on the stove top. And we're using a really nice heavy cast iron pan for that particular piece. Um, we also have um, one nice sharp knife, um, one wooden spoon, and we're going to have one big mixing bowl to mix all the meatballs in. So the first thing we're going to do is just make this really simple tomato sauce because we're just using um, some of these uh, commodity food product uh, tomato sauces. And we're just going to dump them right in here, try to get everything out of there. Um, you can use a rubber spatula if you have some to try and get some of that, all the sauce out. Set that aside. We're using two cans. So then we'll get this going. Um, we want to turn this up to a medium heat. Um, and then I'm going to add a little bit of garlic powder. And again, if you have fresh garlic, um, feel free to utilize that because gar fresh garlic is always better. Um, we're going to be utilizing some dried oregano. And again, feel free to substitute with other herbs if you want. You can use some fresh basil if you have a garden. Um, just feel free to throw whatever herbs make you happy. Um, a little bit of oil into this. It's about two tablespoons. And just a nice fat pinch of salt. And we're just going to stir this up. And again, we're just all we're doing is just letting this heat 
Um, and this is the simplest tomato sauce in the world, um, but it's going to be really good utilizing those products you guys have with the commodity foods. So you're going to want to simmer this uh, for at least five minutes um, and just get it up to temperature. Let all those flavors incorporate. Um, but you can let it just simmer on the stove for a little while. And especially if you're using a little bit of fresh garlic, you want to cook that fresh garlic in a little oil first to kind of unleash all of those flavors and aromas and then add the tomato sauce and the seasonings right after that. While the, our sauce is heating up and starting to cook, we are going to get together all the pieces for our meatballs. Um, so the first thing, we're going to get one nice big mixing bowl. So this is one pound of ground bison. I'm just going to get that in there. We want to get these uh, raisins soaking um, while we're doing some of these pieces. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this hot pasta water I have getting ready and just add a little bit of hot water to these raisins just to let them soak while we're doing some of these pieces. We just want to soften them up a little bit, hydrate them, and then we're going to chop these actually. Strain these and chop these and throw these in with the meatballs. Um, so one quick ingredient we can do is just throw in some of these crushed corn flakes. You can use other cereals too. It's just adding a little bit of binder to these meatballs. And if you wanted to do this even more indigenous, you can utilize some wild rice for that particular step. Yep. So now I'm just going to get some of these onions chopped up. We need about a half a cup, so I'm gonna cut up about two of these um, smaller onions. Um, obviously sometimes you get some much larger ones. Um, so, and yeah, we'll just kind of go from there. So we're gonna make little small dices out of this onion particularly, so be very careful when you're cutting these up, of course. Um, and that really helps to have a sharp knife. Um, it just makes everything in the kitchen um, so much easier, basically. Uh, chefs love their knives and uh, they try to keep them as sharp as possible because it just makes your work so much faster and safer. So we're going to throw all these onions freshly chopped into this mix. All right, and then we're going to take about a half cup of these wild dandelion greens. And I'm just going to kind of flatten them out and roll them up a little bit really tight. And we're just going to give them a nice, really thin chop. So you're making nice little ribbons out of these dandelion greens. And then we'll just give this another rough chop. All right, I'm gonna add this to our recipe. Um, we're gonna use about one tablespoon of salt in this. Great. All right. All right, now let's just check on our raisins. Um, they're starting to get nice and soft. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and strain these out carefully. Um, and then we're also going to chop these up and throw these in with the meatball mix. So now we're just going to try and mash these raisins up. They've been rehydrated a little bit. Um, and just try to use the back of our knife and just kind of smash them. And we'll just kind of give them a nice little rough chop. All right, and we're just going to add these mashed and roughly chopped raisins to the meatball mix. And then we're ready to start uh, incorporating all these things together. We're just going to use a nice spoon and just try to mash everything in there. And obviously bison has uh, so much amazing uh, benefits to it. I mean, it's a healthy fat. It's amazing protein. It's got the hemi iron in it. And it's just especially nutritious when eaten with green vegetables and just enhances our safe digestion and absorption of that hemi iron. All right, now I'm going to get uh, this pan going over here. Um, we're going to do kind of a medium high heat. I'm going to add about two tablespoons of oil. Let that warm up a second. And then we're just gonna start making some meatballs. I'm gonna use my hands, make sure your hands are clean, of course. Um, 
mash this up really good. And we're just gonna make how many? So we're gonna make, you know, just nice little meatballs. Um, these are probably about an ounce and a half, it's just the size of my palm in here. Um, and we're just gonna slowly put them in this hot oil and let them start to simmer and, and sear. We wanna get a little bit of caramelization on the outside of those meatballs. And we'll just keep adding meatballs into this pan. And uh, this is a great one, obviously, to do with your kids. Just make sure their hands are clean, of course. Um, and again, you, you know, these meatball recipes are super flexible, so you guys can add kind of all sorts of stuff in here if you feel like it. It's really up to you what your recipe is. Um, again, this is just a nice guideline of how we're utilizing some of these products coming from the FDPIR program, mixing in some wild foods, and just trying to make something fun and indigenous for our families. So as these are searing, we'll probably start moving them around in a second. You probably want to just let them sit and cook. I mean, uh, when you're cooking meats, it's just the, the less you mess with it, the better. So we're just going to let it sit and sear for a moment, about three minutes, and then we'll kind of roll them around a little bit, try to get the other side, and we just want to be able to uh, cook them all the way through. If you have a meat thermometer, you can temp them out. You want to get them to be at a minimum of 160 um, before we serve them. You can use other um, game animals too. Um, you know, in, in my family in Montana, we have a lot of elk, we have a lot of deer, um, there's even bear, um, there's all sorts of stuff. So whatever you guys might have available to you, this is just an idea of what you can do with some of that. And instead of raisins, you're always welcome to utilize some of the wild berries out there, you know, some fresh blueberries or something like that. All right, so we're just going to want to uh, carefully turn these around a little bit. Um, if your pan gets too hot, we can drop it down a little bit. But we just want to get some nice color on these, not too dark of course, and uh, just kind of go from there. Um, I really enjoy using cast iron pans. Um, I just feel like they hold their heat nice and consistently. Um, a lot of people have old cast irons around their household and they're just great to have. You know, these game animals are just so good for you. Um, they're out there on the grasslands. They're eating all the healthy, diverse plants that are out there. They're a part of this continent, you know, and they, um, we get that when we eat, when we eat these particular animals, we're getting a lot of those nutrients directly from these animals and it's just really healthy for us. Um, and there's just a lot of uh, fun recipes that we can come up with when we're working with these uh, cuts of meat. And again, you can just get these pan seared and um, finish them off in the oven if you want to. Um, but we're just going to let these uh, slowly simmer on the stove. All right, so as those are cooking, I'm gonna get some of our dandelion greens ready for our pasta. So again, we're gonna do the same thing but we're gonna, that we did with the meatballs, but we're gonna make slightly larger cuts. So I'm just gonna try and bundle them all up into one big bundle of leaves here as best as I can um, to make it kind of even. And we're just gonna give them a nice wide chops this time, not too thin like we did the first time. These dandelions are looking really great and dandelions are really super good for you, you know. They're everywhere now and we should be eating them because they're tasty and the whole plant is edible. Everything from the root to the flower. Um, but we love the greens. The greens can get really spicy, almost mustardy um, in the heat of the summer. Um, but they just have so many vitamins. They're just packed with vitamin K, calcium, vitamin E, um, vitamin C and iron. And they're just so good for immune systems um, and just our health and wellness in general. And dandelions are actually a really amazing source of fiber on top of all that. So it's a fun thing to do. They're super easy to identify. It's something you can easily teach your kids to gather. Um, I prefer to find the younger ones because they're going to be sweeter um, and just be a little bit less, uh, just a little bit less fibrous and a little bit less uh, spicy sometimes. Um, and again, they're all over, but just be careful where you're gathering them from. Um, I wouldn't take them from roadsides. I would just make sure that you're harvesting from really clean areas um, where you know people aren't spraying and you know there aren't chemicals around. Um, and you know, just keep your eyes out and just be aware. I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, pasta ready. So I've got my water boiling. Um, you can add a little bit of oil, which only helps the pasta water from boiling over and foaming up. Um, and we're going to add a little bit of salt because we just want the uh, water to be seasoned. And we want the pasta to have a little bit of flavor. Um, so you don't need too much. There's about a tablespoon. And then everything, once the water is boiling and simmering, you can go ahead and drop your pasta. And we're going to set a timer on this, but we're going to cook our pasta for approximately five minutes. Um, just till it starts to become... Uh, 
uh, tender. You can always pull a piece out and taste it to see where you want it. Some people like it a little overcooked, but I prefer not overcooking my pasta and making sure that it has a little bit of a bite to it. Um, and it's just more pleasant for me in that way. So after this pasta is cooked, we're going to drain it. We're going to toss it with a tiny bit of oil just to keep it loose. And then we're going to build our dinner from there. All right, you're going to want to stir your pasta carefully just a little bit just to keep it from sticking and clumping up a little bit. Um, and just keep an eye on that time because, again, we don't want to overcook it. We want it to be just right if possible. And it looks like our sauce is doing really well. I can see it's got all of the spices mixed into it really well. The aroma is really nice. It smells really, really good right now. Um, and this is just going to be perfect for what we're looking for. And the meatballs are looking great. Um, we're going to continue to just let them sear, kind of keep moving them around just a little tiny bit. Um, we don't want them to get too dark on one particular side. Um, and we just want them to be able to cook through, which is why you don't need to make them too big. All right, so the next step is we're going to be just uh, getting ready to strain this pasta out. It's getting pretty close. We still have a couple minutes. Um, just give it a nice stir every now and again, like I said. Um, if it starts to boil over, just uh, remove it from the heat right away and just be really careful. Um, but that's why the oil does help try to keep that uh, foam from happening and boiling over. Um, these meatballs are looking really great. I'm just making sure that you can see these onions are cooking up nicely. Um, if you guys do find some access to wild onions, they're so good for us, you know. Um, they're super high in antioxidants and they just carry a lot of minerals. Um, and they're just really, really good for us um, as humans. And they taste good. They make food taste really, really good. I'm going to dump this now. All right, so now we're just going to dump all this right back into the same pot. This uh, oven and burner is off. Um, we're going to toss a little bit of oil into our pasta. Um, use whatever oil you prefer. Um, we use a lot of sunflower oil. Of course, you can use olive oil if you have it. It has a little bit more flavor. And we just want to get that oil kind of incorporated to the pasta to keep it from sticking. And now we're pretty much just going to build this meal. All right, so now we can start adding everything to our pasta here. I'm going to grab my bigger spoon. So the first thing we're going to do is just go ahead and pour in our pasta sauce. Just try to get all that out of there if we can. Just be careful, these pans are hot. All right, set that aside. Let's give that a quick little stir just to try to incorporate it with all of this pasta. We want the pasta to soak up a little bit of that sauce first. And then next we're going to add our dandelion greens. Again, these are fresh. Nice couple big handfuls. And we're just going to stir that in a little bit and keep those fresh, just vibrant, bright green um, and not overcooked. And they're going to wilt right into this sauce a little bit. And last but not least, we're going to carefully um, get these meatballs in here and just carefully toss them in to coat them just a little bit. And we just have a giant bowl of amazing bison meatballs with tomato pasta and fresh dandelion greens. And let's plate this up and see what it looks like. All right, so we just want to get a little bit of this pasta with some of those fresh greens in it. So let's get that right in the center, just kind of twist it up a little bit. Let's get a couple of these meatballs placed. And like, let's just sprinkle a little bit more of fresh dandelion green on top of that. And voila. All right, well, I hope you guys will enjoy this very simple recipe. Again, you feel free to substitute with wild rice. It'll be just as good, even with the tomato sauce. Um, and this, of course, will be a family pleaser.